Today I'm going to be installing Postgres onto my data center server. Now in my previous video I showed how to install MongoDB and it was a little bit more of an involved process to actually get it installed. Fortunately Postgres does not have the same issues that Mongo does so this is going to be a much more straightforward installation process. And I'm going to start by just updating my package index. So sudo next I'm just going to install Postgres so sudo apt install postgres sql and you can also choose to install postgres ql contrib now the contrib file is just some additional features and packages that will work with postgres now i don't have a full listing of what those are and what they are going to do and so I avoid installing things that I don't fully understand. So I'm not going to install that just yet. And if it turns out that I need it, I can always add it later. Now, before I do anything else, there are a few things that I want to edit in the configuration of Postgres. First of all, I want it to save databases into a particular location on my machine. And I also want it to accept connections from other machines on my network. So for that, I'm going to go to the config file. So I know it's cd slash etsy slash postgres. And in here, it's going to list the version. And then in there, we have main. And here we have the configuration files. And the one that I am looking for is this main one. Postgres SQL config. So we'll edit it with nano. And here we can change a few settings. So the first one I want to change is actually the first one listed. Rather than this being the data directory, I want it to be a custom directory on my machine. And that is going to be slash data slash databases slash PostgreSQL. And the reason I want this is that I have partitioned a separate hard drive and mounted it to this location so that I have a dedicated amount of storage for my databases. And I have another video showing how to do that, but that is my reasoning for changing this particular figure. Finally, I want to look at this listen addresses section. And what I actually want, well, what it has right now is a setting that will only allow applications running on the same machine to connect to the database server. And that's not how I'm going to use it. I'm actually going to have operations on other machines connecting to this one to use that database. So instead of it saying localhost, I actually want it to use star. That way it will connect from anything. And I also want to uncomment the line. Now there is a bit of a danger in allowing it to connect from any IP address. And that is if your ports, this right here, if this port is open on your network to the internet, then anybody can connect to your database through it. Now you'll want to make sure that you have a firewall and network settings that do not allow this port to be open unless you are specifying a specific IP to accept from. But for my case, I have that port closed on my network, and so it's safe for me to use any IP address in the listen addresses. So I can just write this out, close it, and now what I want to do is start the server. But I don't want to just start it for right now. I want to actually start it whenever the machine turns on so that if I ever reboot this server, Postgres will load automatically. So what I can do is sudo systemctl enable Postgres. Now I actually want to start it. So enable makes it so that it will start whenever the system reboots, but I did not specify dash dash now at the end. So if I had done that, it would have started at the same time, but it, I did not, so I actually need to start it manually. So sudo systemctl start Postgres. Next, I need to actually access the account that Postgres created when I s installed the system. And I can do that with sudo -i -u Postgres. 
And now I'm actually logged in to the Postgres account. Now that I am logged into the Postgres account, what I can do is create a different account for my actual user. That way I don't have to use this default Postgres account every time I want to do something on the databases. So what I will do is say create user and I want it to be an interactive shell. So I'll say interactive. And the name is going to be Eric. I will want this to be a super user. Now that I've created the user for my regular account, I can hit control D to leave the Postgres account and return back to my standard Eric account. And from here, if I type in the PSQL command to access the databases, you'll see that I get this error because Postgres is assuming that there is a database with the same name as the user. And since I have not created such a database, none exists. So what I'm going to do is actually create a database. So what I can do is say create DB. I'm just going to call this test. Now it's created the database test. So if I type in the PSQL command again, it's still going to fail because even though there is now a database, it does not share the same name as my user. And so what I actually want to do is type PSQL test, and that's going to bring up the command prompt for that specific database. So in my configuration, there was actually a small mistake. And the mistake resulted in when I ran the PSQL command with test, after having restarted Postgres, I would get an error that said that the server was not running. And the problem was that when I listed my data slash databases slash Postgres SQL file, there was nothing inside it. And so what I needed to do was actually sync it with the default location for the Postgres data. And so what I did was run sudo rsync, and then I said dash a to preserve the permissions that were existing in the default folder. And the default folder was slash var slash lib slash postgresql slash 12, and that's the version, slash main. And then I needed to sync that with slash data slash databases slash PostgreSQL, and then I needed to go back into my configuration folder and edit, or file, excuse me, and edit sudo nano slash etsy slash PostgreSQL slash 12 slash main slash PostgreSQL dot conf, and I needed to change the data directory to simply have main at the end. And then once I restarted the server, what you'll see is that I can now run PSQL on the database test and I can get to the command line. So if you are having a problem where it is saying that the server is not actually running, it may be that you needed to restart Postgres after changing the data directory. And once you did that, it was, was not able to find anything. So the solution is to run the rsync command with the original and now what we can do is remove sudo, whoop, I'll need to get out of this command prompt, so control D, and then sudo rm-r slash var slash lib slash postgresql. And actually before I run that command, I am going to want to check the contents of all of these subdirectories to make sure there's nothing additional that I'm going to be deleting. So I want to list slash var slash lib slash. So this just came, contains the version folder and this just contains the main and everything in main is synced over. So I am safe to just go ahead and remove it. Now you don't actually have to remove this folder, but it takes up space on your machine and it's unnecessary. It is not being used and I should have said sudo for that. And since it's not being used, I like to keep my system nice and clean. And so I can just remove it. And I can still run PSQL on test and it's still working. So it is in fact using the contents of the folder slash data slash data slash PostgreSQL. And we'll see that, yeah. 
that is now running as I want it to. All right, so we all know how this part works. If this video is useful to you, please hit the like button. It helps me grow the channel and it'll help other people find the video. Also, this is part of a larger project where I'm trying to build a company starting with just three old laptops. So if you're interested in seeing how I do that, you can hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get notifications when I upload a new video. So thank you for watching.